Hi and welcome back to the Low Level Devil Channel's Build a Linux Distribution from Scratch series. In this video we're going to continue on with the development of our simple package creator utility. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, please check the description for a link to the playlist. So to start off we're going to go into this common header and create a couple of function prototypes. For a, we'll have a stir list append, stir list copy, and a stir list from string because we want to be able to create one from a character separated strings. So I'm going to put these in the common C file. Just create some empty shells for them for now. Okay, and stir list append. We'll start with that one actually. And I don't want to return void. I want to return, let's see, maybe a bool. Um, all right, let's actually, I think, you know, what we want to do is actually return a pointer to the list that we append. Yeah, so let me take this stir list and I'll make that the return value. And I'll just take that in the common. Okay, now to start with first thing we want to do is do some simple sanity checks. So I want to make sure that this L is not null. So let's go ahead and do it. If not L, then we'll return zero. So if you give us a null, we're going to return you back a null. So now if not the uh, L's stir value, then we'll set the stir value and we'll set that to the uh, we're going to use stir dupe to duplicate the string so stir dupe s so that'll give us a duplicate of that string and, re and then we'll return l now if there is a value already in that string then we want to create a new um, a new instance of that stir list. Now we want to check and see if this one's next is already set. So if it's not set that means this is the, the last one so we want to create what am I, hold on let's see we want to say l next equals malloc size of stir list. So we're allocating a new one at the end here and we want to set its next to zero which would indicate it's the last one in the list and we'll set its stir to stir dupe s so we're duplicating s there and of course we'll have to free this stuff up too so I'll go back and create a a free uh, stir list function as well so in this one we're going to return l next and then we want to say l equals l next in this while loop so once we get to the end we create a new one and then we're out and if you're familiar with uh, with the uh, linked list idea then that's how they should work so now we'll create a free function because we since we're doing this stir dupe and malloc we want to be able to free that memory too so I'm going to put a bool on here saying do we want to free the actual list passed in to because if you see here these aren't pointers those are stack objects so uh, yeah so we wouldn't want to actually free that the list head in those cases so we'll say if if not L then return so if L stir we want to free that because that is a pointer no matter what. So then we'll say, let's see, we should do if free head, or actually we'll start with a stir list. So p equals l next. Now we can say if free head, then we can free l. Now that we have that pointer to p. So now while p, then we'll do this same thing as we did up here with if the string is set. So first we'll actually get 
pointer to this object. So on the current one, P, then we want to free, oh, we'll say, first we want to make sure that it actually was allocated, which it should always be, but just to be safe, we'll just do this check. So if P star, free P star. Now we can say, yeah, so now we want to grab the next one so that we can continue in our loop. So, but we also want to free that current and actually, so P equals P next, which we need to do before we free. So, all right, so now it should loop through each one of them and delete the object and delete the string. So I'll put this in our header too. Um, nope, not that file. Let's see. Common.h. There we go. So now I could continue on with the rest of those, but let's maybe get started on the actual main program. This will be the simple package manager, which we'll get to later, but in this one we want to do the simple package creator. So I'm going to create a new folder. This will be SPKC, our simple package creator. So I want to keep that separate from the manager just so we have smaller programs, easier to manage. So this will be a utility that we can run on the command line to assist us in creating a, an actual package. So it will be fairly simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is include that package.h. And yeah, I need to update my extension settings here. So let me go and update my include paths. You may or may not need to do this depending on you know what editor and all that you're using. So I'm going to just make this guess I just need src slash include. I think that should be enough. Then now, yeah, if I click on that, it should take me to it. Yep, that looks good. Again, that's kind of optional, just if you don't want your, you know, the uh, Visual Studio Code complaining about it, the uh, missing files and stuff. So now, let's see, we'll create our main function. So int main, int arg count, and then char argv. Okay, and now I'll just return zero at the end. So we're going to use something called argp. I just pasted in some includes here just to make it quicker. But we're going to use argp, which gives you ability to uh, read the options and stuff like that from the command line. And that should be in the standard libraries, I believe, in glibc. So let's go into here, and you can actually run man argp parse. Actually, I don't have the man pages installed. So you can say uh, argp underscore parse. Yeah, it's like a new C library. So if you click on that, you can learn some stuff about it, and it gives you examples and how to use it. and and all that stuff. Um, I, I won't get too much into that here. I'm just going to code it and you can kind of see how I'm using it. Okay, so to start with, we're going to need to actually create a, some uh, initial variables that will pass into that argc parse. The first one is going to be a static char doc. It's like a documentation kind of thing. I'm going to put LLDOS the package creator. Okay, and then I'll create a static char args doc. So this is going to be the documentation for the arguments, which I believe you'll see if you do dash dash help. All right, so now this is where we're going to get into the real options. So argp options options equals so this is going to be an array of these structures 
Okay, and now the first field in here is actually the long name. And then the second field is the single character name. Then a, uh, a description for the field that gets passed in, a zero, and then a, uh, a dis this would be a description for that field. So, so we have, you would pass in dash dash root or dash r, and you'd pass in a dat uh, path to, to give it for our root file system. This is so I can actually run it not in the uh, change root environment and run it from a alternative host as well. So the second field, as you can see, I'm entering here as a URL, and you'll pass in a URL, which is going to be the source, the URL for the source code. Then we'll say package dash name or dash p, and then you're going to pass in the name for the package. Package name. So the next field is going to be version. So when we're doing glibc, for instance, the package name would be glibc and version would be 2.33. Okay, I'm speeding it up a little bit here. So we have version, and then the next one will be our is group because in some cases we'll want to, which I think I've covered already, but you know, you want to have a group that doesn't actually have code in it to download and the, since this one doesn't actually have a parameter we just pass zero as that second field and then let me look at this one no source I think yeah that's the other full no source we're gonna call it no package I just decided to change that to no package so that makes more sense of a name for it and yeah actually make these group and no dash package. And I don't know what to do for this little so I'm going to just put Q. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. No package download for install. Okay, now then the next one I'm going to do depths. So this is going to be our list of dependencies and we're going to use an actual comma separated list. So what you pass in is a comma separated list of the dependency names. So it'll be the packages that we uh, pass in. So I'll just put comma separated in. Print these there. Let's copy this and it'll be the same for make depths. I'll take that M, MK depths. Oh, this is annoying. Make dependency. Then we have extras. I'm going to use E for that extra names and extra uh, files again comma separated so then at the end we want to make sure you put a zero because then it knows it hit the end of the list then we create a structure to actually hold the values that are passed in so char pointer for the root um, file system that we're going to use and this LLDOS package PCK so we'll put all the values inside that package object. And we'll call this, let's see, SPKC args. Okay. Okay, make sure I put that semicolon there. Um, so now this is going to be the function that gets called to parse the options. So this is kind of where you put your code to uh, handle each of these uh, different fields. And SPKC see args we're going to set that to state input and this is just a part of that argp api so now we're going to switch the key the key is the actual character you know single digit character uh, so the first one r if r is set i want to set args root to the argument if u is set i want to set let's see args name oh actually we want to use uh not source <laughs> Yeah, pck dot source and then pck dot name. You put that uh, char pointer arg is the actual argument passed into it. So if v is passed in as an argument, then we'll set the version to that. Then g is yeah group. So now if g is set, 
there is no argument, you notice. So we just want to say our PCK is group equals true. So if, if it's not a group, just don't pass that flag. So Q is no package equals true. I hope this isn't going too fast for you. I just didn't want you to wait for me typing all this stuff slowly. So now the D is going to be the dependencies. So for this one, yeah, we need to actually implement a function first. So well, we have that we have that function already. So what I'm going to do is star list l equals stir list from stir. So I'm going to pass in the argument and then say the separator is a comma. All right. So now that we have that list. Now what we actually want to do is use another function that we still have to implement, which is that copy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so now we'll say stir list copy pass in args pck dot depths, and we're copying l, and now we want a free l. So we're gonna create l from that uh, parse string, copy it over to our pck depths, and then free it. I hope you're following that. So uh, let's see, and we'll say we want to pass true because we do want to delete the head on this case because L is the one we're deleting. Now we can just copy and paste this for M and E for our make depths and our extras. Just need to change these fields here and extras. There we go. Okay, now slow the pace down a little bit here. Let's see. So uh, go back to common. All right, so now we want to implement this stir list copy. So in order to copy a string list, we have our two stir equals stir dupe from stir. So that's the first step. So first we copy each of the heads string, and now we're going to loop through the list. So we see LF is list from. We start with from next. Then LT equals two yeah I think that was right so now we do a while LF so while that is not null we'll say LT e um, equals malloc size of stir list and then we'll say two next equals LT so now we can say LT stir equals stir dupe LF stir. So that's, or, and then we say 2 equals LT. Now LF equals LF next, so that'll continue in our loop to get to go to the next one. Again, this is kind of simple, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, linked list implementation. Alright, so that looks all correct. And now we can move on to the. Yeah, Malik, okay. Alright, so now we can move on to the stir list from stir. So this, we're going to take in a string that's got comma separated strings. So we're going to pretty much separate each of the dependency names by a comma. So if not stir or stirlin is less than one, return zero. So that's just invalid. Simple protection there. I'm not gonna go out of the way with all of the different, you know, checks and bounds, checking and all that, but just, you know, the basics so it doesn't get way out of hand as far as the length of these videos. So to start with, we're creating this new list object. We'll say the head is that list object. So now we'll say list next equals zero. So now we're going to use a stir talk. Um, we're using stir dupe as well. So stir talk is a tokenizer. Stir in the separator. And let's see, we'll say while that talk value list stir equals talk we've duplicated it so I think that's right so then we say talk equals stir talk null 
and then separator. So if not talk, then we know we're at the end. We can just break. Otherwise, we're going to say stir list next equals malloc. Yep, malloc size of stir list. Okay. Next, next equals zero or null. And next stir equals null. And then we'll say list next equals next. Yeah. And list equals next. So that'll take us back to around where it sets list stir to token at the top. And then we're going to return head. So now that we're back in here, I think that completes all this implementation. So now I'm setting up this argp struct which is going to have the options, the opt parse, the args doc and the doc, and then zero for the rest of the fields in it. If you want to know more about that structure, there's plenty of documentation on it. It's in the glibc. But we're essentially we're passing in all those things that we were just setting up. So now we can go on to the implementation that parses these. And I think I put the main up here. It should be down here. Okay, now moving on. We're going to start with creating our uh, args structure. We'll just call it args equals zero. Just initialize everything to zero. Okay, I'm speeding this up a little again here. So this is uh we're gonna just gonna print out this LLDOS simple package creator v 1.0.0. And then we're going to have our argp parse function get called. It's gonna take in the argp, the argc, argv, zero zero, and then our arg structure. Okay, that all looks great. So now if the root isn't set then we're going to set it to user share LLD uh, or SPKC repo. Okay, that looks right. And then, so also what we're going to do is get environment variable. So if the user sets SPKC root, so if they're going to set root, then we will override that as well. Hope that makes sense. If not, you know, ask in the comments and I can describe further. All right, so now we'll move on to, let's see. Yeah, let's do some more checking. So if args pck name, so if the name is not set and the source is not set, then we're going to print an error. You need to either provide the URL or you need to provide the name. Those are required. So if they don't provide a name, but they provide a URL, then we'll, we're going to actually just extract the name from that URL. We create a function called load pck from source. And we'll just pass in the arguments. And if that fails, we'll say failed to parse source URL. Now let's go ahead and create this function. So essentially what we're going to do here is you know the the name of the package is and the version is usually in the source URL in a specific format so we're just gonna try to pull that out of that format first all packages aren't gonna fit that but some of them will so in those cases we can just pass in the URL only for the edge cases that don't you know we'll just uh, mainly pass in the the uh, name and the version Okay, so first we're going to copy the file name into this temporary uh, file name here. We're actually going to just get use base name of source because that'll give us just the file name since we're using base name. And we probably don't need that big of a buffer for this either. 4096 is kind of pushing it. That's the max uh, size on a path in Linux, but uh, I think 
1024 is plenty. Alright, so let's say the end equals stir stir. So we're using stir stir and looking in the file name for dot t. So if it finds dot tar or dot tgz, then we're going to assume, okay, that's the end of the of the section that has the um, name and the version. So like gcc dash one ten point twenty three point zero dot tar it's going to stop right at that dot in dot tar so end is essentially going to point to that that part of the string so you see both of those things this would both fit into that it's not a perfect way to do it but this is good enough for our uh, creation utility so now if not end that means it didn't find it so we can just say Actually, we just return false because we already have something saying that uh, a, a print message if this fails. Now we can say set the uh, dereference end and set it to zero, which means we're null terminating the string at that point. Hope that makes sense to you. That way we can just uh, you know print out the specific file name. Or, or at that point we have the uh, the name and the version all in one string. So now let's say end equals stir archer. So we're doing a reverse stir check on file name for dash. So if there's multiple dashes, for instance, in the name of a package, this should find the very last one because that would be the separator that starts the uh, name and the version. So, like for instance, GCC, there's only one, but yeah, I'll, I'll show you in, in a minute. So if that's if that's not there, we'll return false as well. So let's say, you know, GCC has a one dash, so you're always going to get one there, but there could be other functions that have more than one dash. Like, let's say there's a GCC shared lib 10.23.0 or something like that so it would find this very last dash since we're using stir archer instead of stir chur all right so now we have that string that has both file name and version so now we can say version equals end plus one because we want to point to the string the part after that dash and now we can say set that end pointer to zero and again that's null terminating the first string by setting that end to zero so now we can say package name equals star dupe file name and package version equals ver star dupe ver okay I think that should be it and we want to return true at the end and everything went as planned. All right, and we'll put this function here in package.h. Um, not plx package. Let's say u32 ldos. Let's see, package to string. So this is a new function that we want to create to convert a package to a string so that we can print it out or write it to a file. So it'll take a package, a pointer to a package, a char buffer, and then a U32, the max size, the char buffer. I'm going to put this in here. Okay, I'm speeding this one up too. And let me know if you don't like me speeding things up. I just want to get through these at a fairly quick rate. So I'm creating these. And this isn't the perfect way to do it again. I'm just kind of, I want to keep things simple so I can show you how to do this. And you can implement it fully on your own in your own, you know, uh, distribution or whatever you're playing with. So I'm creating these different character buffers to hold for the depths, the make depths, and the extras. So now I'm going to loop through these package dependencies. I'm going to do a stir cat. So I'm 
essentially uh, appending to stir depths a couple of spaces a quote the string another quote comma and then a return and I'm going to do this exact same thing for make depths and extras. So let's, I'm going to create a simple function here, copy stir list to make this easier. That way I'm not copy and pasting all this stuff all over the place. So I'll just take this and I'll say buffer, buffer, buffer. And I'll replace yeah, I'll take that. I'm going to replace that with a call to copy stir list and stir depths. So now I can just take each of those, make depths extras. All right, so now I'm going to return an SN printf. All right, so this is going to use the buffer. See that we'll use max size followed by a set of strings here. So we have name, and then I'm going to just do each of these on one line. So name, version, and then we have, let's see, repo, which I'm doing just hard coding as core for right now. Okay, now we have the source is group. Let's see, no package. Oh, we need to put percent s in those. We'll have depths. Let's see, followed by, yeah, just percent s and line. Yeah, I'll just put this all in end line to make it easier to, s to see here. And I can copy and paste this. Oh, these commas don't belong there. You don't want commas there, that'll break it. So make depths and extras. Now we do a comma and then all the different variables we're adding in. So the first one was name. So we'll get that from our package object, PCK name then version source um, so we'll do PCK is group yes true otherwise false same thing for no package oh, let's see so now we do what comes after no package depth so now we want to do this function to stir Dips. Yeah, let's we'll make sure we have these right. Stir extras. Stir extras. Yes. You guys were probably looking at that telling me to <laughs> to fix it back when I wrote it, right? <laughs> okay, so we got those in there and let's see. I think that's everything. So we should be able to actually make a package and print it out. Which is a good first start. So let's see. Let's try to build it. So we need to get back into the source directory, go into SPKC. Now to do a build, I'm just going to run GCC. Well, I will create a make file later, but for now I'm just doing GCC main.c. Go back, and then it's common, or shared, that's right. And then star.c. And we want to include the includes directory. Let's see, after that, we just want to set the output file to be P SPKC. Uh, let's see, got a bunch of warnings at least. There's an error. I think a lot of it is just missing header files, so I can just copy the header files from one file to another. I think for the most part I had them all. Let's find. So we're in package.c. Yeah, I need to add, add a bunch in here. So 
let's see, did I have them in this one? Yeah, let me just copy all this stuff to make it easy. It's not going to hurt anything if you have includes that you don't need in general, but I like to keep them clean, but just to make things quick, I'm just going to paste them all there. It looks like we're just missing one. Base name, yeah, that is... Let's see, that needs... Libgen, I think. Include libgen.h. Clear, make, no, not make. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so everything ran. So now we have spkc. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a test run of it. We'll print out the uh, package details at the end. So we'll say charster uh, 1024, that's enough for this. LL DOS, package to string, let's say arc PCK, we want to pass a pointer to it, and then stir, and then 1024 for the max size. And we'll just print F parsed package and we'll say a return two returns and then the string and then a return all right so let's see stir okay compiled that's one good sign now let's see if it actually runs let's see spkc so we would want to pass in glibc Let's find the source URL. Oh, actually, it's up here. There you go. Copy that. Copy. OK, so now that we have that source URL, we'll pass that in as the source. And let's see, dash U. And do we want to do anything else? Maybe just see if that works. Okay. All right, so if we says must provide URL or name, so I must have messed something up here. Let me go back. I must have messed something up in our load package from source. Oh, yeah, it was the issue was here. We need a default case. So if it's n this is in our arg parse function. In the default case, we want to return argp error unknown. Because if you don't do that, and if you don't return actual zero at the end, then it, it'll it stop processing. So that, yeah, that's our parse opt function. So you want to make sure you do that so it can continue on parsing the variables. And no, that's not the right one. It's this one here. All right, so now let's go ahead and try that again. I think everything else is correct here. I'm going to put a return at the end of that, too, because that was a little annoying. All right, so let's clear DCC again and rerun this. And this time I put a dash P at the end, too. I want to take that off. All right, there we go. So now you can see it picked glibc and 2.33 out of our source URL. Everything else looks correct. I didn't have any dependencies or make dependencies or extras. So let's try out those as well. So it's group and no package is all set. So now let's try with some dependencies. Dash D, we'll make it simple, say ASDF, comma, FDSA, comma, one, two, three, four. So those are dependencies and then our make dependencies will be B, C, D, and our extras will be E, F, and G. And we get a segment fault. And I know what that's due to because I messed up here with this stir dupe. That d I don't know why I did that. That does not belong there. It actually belongs here. Stir dupe token. In the stir list from stir. Well, let's run that again. Done up. Let me increase this size again. 
Alright, so dependencies, I'm just doing A, B, C, D, E. M is F, G, H, I. Extras is J, K, L, M. And there we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J, K, L, M. Alright. Okay, so I think that's a good stopping point. We're generating our package YAML. Um, so right now we're just printing it to the console, but what we actually want to do is write that to the file in the location. So create the directories, uh, write the .pck file to the right location, create the build, and install file if necessary. So that we'll do in the next video, and that video should be a lot shorter, and that should finish up our package creator. And then after that we'll move on to the actual package manager where we'll, where we'll do building and all that. So it'll build packages and install them and everything like that. That'll be a pretty good long set of videos because there's a lot to cover in that. So let's uh, move on to the next video um, to, to finish up this package creator. So again, if you enjoy this video, like, comment, subscribe and all that. And uh, let me know if there's anything you like or don't like about the video. And thanks for watching.